Hello, before we get into things, I just want to add a quick preface that, like any other script or package that you import, you should always make sure to back up your project before importing. It's as simple as going to the Creator Companion and selecting three dots and create backup. In addition, this script relies on a new functionality, the VRC constraints that were just added to the SDK, so make sure that your project is on the latest SDK version or the script will not work for you. Thank you. Let's get into the video. Hello, today I'm going to be quickly covering how to use my After Images install script. It's pretty straightforward, there aren't that many settings, however there are some things to keep in mind while using the script. To start off, let's cover basic usage and then I'll get into some more complicated things. So to start, we want to give our script an avatar to install the After Images on. And then we need to give it an avatar to be after images. So this is the avatar that's actually turned into those clones that fall behind. Um, this does not destroy that avatar, so you can actually just use your avatar again uh, if you would like, and it will create identical clones of your avatar. We'll come back to this later because there are some things you should keep in mind when delegating a clone like this and some things that we should be removing from clones for maximum performance and just generally to keep things nice and tidy. So you'll notice that the second that I slotted in the avatar to be after images, these gizmos appeared in the scene. These gizmos have to do with first person camera transparency. So basically when you're, when you have after images in the scene, right, and you're moving around, you don't want your own head after image to be in your face. That would just not be nice. <laughs> so I have added a functionality to bake um, some vertex colors into your clone models that allow the shader to discard uh, your head when it's close to your viewport viewpoint. So basically anything inside the circle will be discarded when it's close to your viewpoint. Um, I recommend encompassing your entire head. You can be a little bit uh, generous with this. Typically I move the gizmo up to the top and then encompass just the head in the bottom of the sphere. So damping constraint weight is how quickly the constrained clones attempt to return to your body. Um, 0.5 is a good middle ground, but anything in the range of 0 and up works. Um, negative values I do allow, however that just sends your clones flying. Don't really see why anyone would want, want to do that, but I left it in regardless. Um, number of after images, this is the number of clones that will be created that follow your avatar. Um, I would recommend leaving it at 5. 5 is about the value that most excellent avatars will not become very poor when you apply this. So the avatar I'm applying it on now is an excellent. You don't have to use an excellent avatar. Um, and the script does some things to try to mitigate performance impact, which I'll get into in a second. However, I do ask that if you're going to use this on a very heavy avatar, don't be a nuisance with it. Don't go into big public worlds and cause other people to drop 20 frames. <laughs> um, so first person camera transparency radius, this is just a place where you can directly uh, set the value for the sphere, but you can see that the sphere sets that for us. Uh, link non-humanoid bones, this is an experimental option. Currently, by default, the script links only humanoid bones, so bones that can be found in your humanoid FPX setup. That means that certain bones like ears and, and fizz bones, places you would normally see fizz bones, don't get directly constrained um, in the chain. Instead, we continue to rely on their fizz bones to make them move about how the main avatar previously was moving. The issue with this is that sometimes fizz bones can have um, like order of operations issues when on constraints, and so your ears might be a little bit wonky, for example, with uh, a low damping constraint weight. Um, when you select link non cunoid bones, this links all bones together. It is experimental, there are some issues that can come up when attempting to do this. It also costs a lot more in terms of constraints and bones. I have to do some hacks to get around some issues with uh, your mirror clone, stuff like that. So 
So I would recommend leaving it off unless you find that you need it or you are a performer and want like maximum fidelity. Uh, remove fizz bones on after images. This is pretty much exclusively for if you're linking on humanoid bones because you don't need those fizz bones, they just get in the way. Uh, remove contacts on after images. This removes senders and receivers on your after images. There's no real need to have them. And I just felt it was a, a good setting to have. Okay, combine skin meshes and materials. So this is a setting that attempts to mitigate some of the performance costs of having a large model that's cloned five times, let's say. Basically, it attempts to compress the model down into just one skin mesh and one material. This can fail. Sometimes this does not work out. It also implies some um, restrictions. So to start, I would recommend leaving it enabled. However, if it causes issues for your model, you may have to disable this. Another case where this does not work is for models where the FBX is like modified in some way, like the bones are modified in Unity. Uh, one good example is the Nova Beast, in which the tail is sculpted in Unity, and it unfortunately cannot handle that case. One thing you can do to handle those cases if you have to leave this off is use a tool like Dark's Avatar Optimizer, which vastly helps um, to bring down the skin mesh count by merging meshes, etc. It's significantly more capable than this implementation here, and so I would recommend using it if you cannot use this. So once we have all those settings set up, we've selected our avatar, avatar to be after images, and set up the sphere. We can click install after images. So it will think for a second, and then your model will snap in with uh, this pink everywhere. Um, so by default, when you have combined skin mesh meshes and materials enabled, the material is set to a missing like default error material. And so to fix that, we just click slot materials on clone meshes and you'll see everything uh, sort of fixes itself. There's this checkbox here for preview after images. And you can actually see the after images uh, while we work on them, which is really helpful. So if you haven't already, there is a free gradient pack uh, on the Gumroad page that you can download separately. Um, and that just gives us access to some nice gradients. You'll have the default by default, and then you can select these gradients from your project. Um, so to start with, we're going to choose this nice green one. You'll see that we get a green outline and then for our green uh, after images and then for the outline I'm going to select this one which is just like a empty. So you see the the effect that we're getting going and obviously you can change these freely so you could make this like two-tone by putting a, uh, a blue handle in there right now it's green and blue. And these can be modified to your heart's content. Um, stencil value we will deal with later. For now, just know that you want to set it to a value and copy that down. So one, two, three is a good value. And then there is the inside edge displacement and outline thickness. So the model actually uh, has an outline. I set this to zero and this is like 0 0.01. Also turn up the the intensity of the outline and sort of see that there's an outline going on. Um, so you can obviously just use this like an outline, right? It can look pretty nice, but you can also use it as what I'm calling like an inline. So if you set this to zero and set a negative value on this, then everything goes inside, but the outline is still there. Um, it's just like on the inside of the mesh. So once you are happy with your after images, uh, I'm going to be happy with this. I think that's good. You can just close the window and your after images are locked in. You can see that this object is made and when you move the avatar around, your after images show up. So you'll notice that there's some like odd, um, like basically your after images show up above your avatar. Now, for some people, that might be desirable, but personally, I find it uh, not amazing. So to counter that, we can use stencils. Most modern shaders come with stencils. Uh, today, I'll be showing how to do it in Poyomi, but most of the other big tune shaders have this. 
Um, so we come all the way down to the bottom to rendering. And under rendering, we find the stencil tab. So it's really simple. You just set your reference value, uh, and you'll need to do this for every material on your avatar. Uh, you just set your reference value to that value we copied before and set the stencil pass op from keep to replace. Now you'll see that all the after images are over rendered and when we move around it looks just fine. At this point you can upload and you're good to go. Now chances are your avatar will not be as simple as a single mesh and material. Um, there are some added considerations as your uh, avatar gets more complex and so we will talk about them right now. So for this I'm going to use the example of a uh, hollow Hollow has uh, quite a few things that aren't really stuff that we want to be an afterimage, and also things that sort of like could potentially interfere, like Gogo Loco and BRC Fury Scripts. Um, and so, what we want to do is when we're creating the uh, or setting up the afterimages, you copy and paste your model, and then literally walk through and delete anything that is not going to be a after image. Um, and then you use that as the uh, avatar to be after images. This goes for stuff like inside the hierarchy and anything that isn't part of the, the main skin mesh. This is also a good opportunity to talk about animations. So some avatars might have like clothing options and toggles that won't be reflected um, on the the uh, after images by default. Um, you will have to set up animations for the after image meshes. One problem is if you combine your skin meshes and materials, you will not be able to just like toggle the objects. So you may want to disable this for doing so. Uh, for now, I'm going to leave it on and so that we can see all these uh, meshes get merged together. We're going to click Install After Images. Preview. For now, I'm going to hide the clone. A slot clone meshes. Uh, you'll notice it gets a little bit blocky. This is just because uh, Hollow is exported from Blender with a different scaling. So we're just going to set this to, uh, to zero for now while we work on this. Uh, so this time we go for Rainbow, I think. That looks pretty nice. 85, I already set up the stencils on this model, so 85 just has it stenciled out. And yeah, if we inspect the uh, after images, you can see that everything got combined down into one combined mesh for the entire model. And this is ready for upload at this point. I would like to point out that I would not recommend using um, an avatar this heavy in public worlds. So you'll see this is almost <laughs> 900,000 polygons. Um, that is not really something that you should be using on a regular basis. Wrap everything up. Um, I hope you now understand how to use the After Images installation script. If you run into any issues or problems or you find a bug or you get an error, uh, definitely reach out to me on Discord. I I'm incapable of testing this tool on every single avatar in existence. So if you find an edge case that I miss, then it's great to let me know so that I can fix it. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching.